good day to you. And it is a good day because today actually I'm talking to Devin Harris about doing the improbable. And as I was just telling uh, Devin uh, right before is that this is an idea that I'm very excited about because I've been wanting to talk to someone about doing the things that we think we cannot do, that they're really improbable, and yet we can still achieve them. And I think Devin Harris is a prime example of having done this in multiple occasions and multiple phases of his life. He's actually a three-time Olympian and one of the founding members of the legendary Jamaica bobsled team, which I think we all know from the from the Disney blockbuster movie, Cool Runnings, that came from it, was inspired on the 1988 Olympic Games in Calgary. Um, actually, in my opinion, this movie doesn't do any right to what happened and what you and the, and the team and co-founder George Fitch actually have achieved. So I think let's set some of that record potentially straight here during this talk. Um, Devin is also a graduate of the prestigious Royal Military Academy Sandhurst in England, a retired army captain and the author of two books of which one, and I think this is important, is a children's book. He's a motivational speaker who's been inspiring people globally with his talks and continues to do so. He's also the founder of Keep On Pushing. It's a foundation which aims to support and enhance the education of kids in disadvantaged communities by providing practical solutions to the challenges that prevent them from getting educated. I think that's amazing work, Devin. So thanks a lot for being here today and allowing me to pick your brain on, on some of the challenges you faced along your way. And hopefully uh, we can inspire other people to do the improbable. Indeed, Julius, thank you so much for having me, man. How are you doing? I'm very good, man. Appreciate you being here with me. Hey, I want to start off with um, backtracking a little bit. You've achieved some amazing things, uh, of which some I've mentioned just now in, in the introduction. But you actually grew up in the slums of Olympic Gardens, funny enough, Olympic Gardens. So there was already something <laughs> in the destiny there, I imagine. Could yes. You, could you take us back, please, uh, right down memory lane so we can better understand and appreciate your, your journey and your story? Yeah, so um, actually, so my early years, Julius, were actually spent in the country with my grandmother. We we'll probably end up, uh, you know, talking about her as well because I, I blame her for all of this. It's her fault, right? <laughs> um, so when I was, uh, you know, young, maybe five years old, I think I, I returned to Kingston uh, to live with my dad, and it was in Olympic Gardens, um, which is, uh, wow, it's such a world away from. Uh, you know, I, I, my early years were spent roaming around the, 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 the it's called the district, the countryside, mm -hmm. you know, uh, really unsupervised, safe, just, I can't, and then I'm in a, back, I'm in Kingston now in Olympic Gardens, and I feel like I'm in prison because tall zinc fences and you're just stuck in the yard, mm -hmm. uh, can't roam anywhere. Um, and then it just, um, you know, Jamaica in the late, mid to late, 70s early 80s just went through a, a really challenging time and there was just a lot of political strife and violence and gun violence that just began to rise and um so it made it um a, a scary time to be mm -hmm. honest um and i didn't really realize how uh, on edge i was until the stuff had kind of died and i think we are going to those kind of um uh, um safety mechanism like we're just like okay let's get through this right yeah. um and then you know economically and of course jamaica is a developing country and when you you find yourself at the bottom um on the bottom rung in such an environment it makes it a little bit more challenging as well yeah sure um but you know dude i, I love school man i loved uh you know i'm not a road scholar by any stretch of the imagination but you know i, I crack a couple of books yeah. i read them <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> You know, but I, I think that I have a competitive nature in me and there's this competitive nature that exists in class and uh, oh, you're trying to get to the top of the class. Uh, it was just fun, you know, school was where I got a chance to play. I love to play too. Uh, that's probably why I love school so much. And then the, 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 the education partners, you know, kind of came along with it. Um, but yeah, those, those were the kind of the early experiences, you know, coming into Kingston and, um, living in an environment like that and 
being influenced uh, a lot by what happened in school because you kind of got a sense of almost a sense of purpose, a sense of validation, and a sense that there were other things out there that, that you could do as well. Mm -hmm. What inspired you in those early days? What what in in um, Olympic Gardens? maybe looking out into the big world through your books, through your schooling, mm -hmm. what inspired you and what thought, like what were the big dreams and goals that you had in those, at those days? Well, you know, it's funny I said, because uh, the, 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 the one of all the things I've always wanted to do, I've wanted to do a million things, right? Lawyer, doctor, Indian chief, you know, um, every, every year we, uh, in Jamaica, we celebrate uh, Heroes Month and there are several, seven, Nice. outstanding Jamaicans that we hold up as national heroes and I don't remember how old I was at the time maybe 10 and I go yeah that's what I want to be a national hero and I'm like oh but <laughs> you know and then my next thought was well there are no more slaves to be freed you know because a lot of them were out of out of our slavery uh slave history I'm like well, yeah. I guess that's all the truth. I can't be a national hero. But the one thing that was always constant was this idea of being a soldier. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I mentioned my grandmother and I, and I blame her because um, uh, my early years were spent with her and she was an amazing storyteller. Um, and the stories that had the strongest impact on me were the ones she told me about soldiers and the amazing things they could do and not get hurt. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do that, but I'd want to do it. And so that inspired me to want to, to join the army. But what, what was more important, and I didn't realize it then, of course, looking back, I see it, yeah. um, was, you talk about doing the improbable, probable. those stories inspired me to want to go pursue goals, uh, you know, go after results that everybody else thought was impossible or yes. diff just incredibly difficult. Um, so so in, the, in the early years, I don't know, five to 10 to 12, um, the soldier thing was a thing that was like always foremost in my mind. And then, um, you know, I, just, I was just competing on, I was just trying to be among the, uh, one of the best among my peers, you know, so in, in, in class, uh, you know, we're always competing. And then I discovered sports, you know, football. I, know, I live in America, they call it soccer. I don't know why, yeah. but um, you know, and uh, you know, and I had a knack. I had a knack for the game. I, you know, I, I, I could twirl the ball a little bit. I, I say, um, and so that gives you um, that really does something to your self esteem, right? And uh, that I, the thing I loved about sports, what I discovered then, is that you know nothing that's happening in the world matters when you're on that soccer pitch. I don't care you know, who, who your family is, how much money you have. It's like, dude, bring it one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what talent you have. Let's see what heart and what guts you have. Yeah. Um, heart is the so important one also. What's that? I said heart is also the very important yeah. part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, so I kind of discovered that and I, and I would say, you know, took it, took that thing from the sports field out into into life as well. Yeah. You you joined the Royal Military Academy in, in Sandhurst in England. I imagine that was no easy feat. <laughs> Could you share something of what you learned about overcoming the obstacles and finding the persistence within yourself during those, those days of, of getting in and, and making it happen? Well, yeah, so uh, so I think that it was not a, a, a giant, I don't know how you say that, a, a giant leap to Sandhurst per se. It's a process because I joined the Jamaica Defense Force. Yes. And one of the places where we train our officers was at Sandhurst. Um, I, and I agree that, that it was a, a leap um, uh, in, in, in many respects uh, because, you know, I'm coming from the middle of Olympic Gardens, one of the toughest ghettos wanting to be an army officer. And that's just not something that happens every day <laughs> uh, kind of thing. You know, in, a, in addition it, to- Yeah, I was gonna say it's an improbable uh, goal. It, it, it is, it is. Yeah. I, I, and you know, um, I, I think perhaps as I was thinking about this, I started thinking about this yesterday for some reason, um, 
a big part of that is really the perceived limitations. Because if you think about the procedures per se, which I'll talk about in a second, mm -hmm. there's nothing that says I can't do it. Um, but there's always this thing like, well, I am from Olympic Gardens, man. This is all the way up there. How am I going to do it, right? Nobody yeah. does that. It's not expected, right? So there's that psychological piece, I yes. think. Um, but it's a, the, the selection process itself is pretty rigorous. And I don't care who you are. It's going to be hard. Um, maybe certain upbringings will, and actually I believe that certain uh, way, certain certain upbringing will make it a little bit easier for you. You'll, you, you know, approach us with more confidence and more self assurance and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, dude, I was just doggedly determined. I don't know that I had this this suave and this self uh, confidence to go do this thing, but uh, dog got it. I was going to do it. You know, the heart from mm -hmm. the sports field again, and that determination and that. Um, uh, that that mindset that my grandmother inadvertently planted in my head that you can go do uh, improbable things. And so, you know, when I turned up for the selection process, three days, 33 of us, at the end of it all, I was a top pick of only three who made it. Oh. And, um, you know, after 18 miserable weeks of boot camp, um, they, they sent me to Sandhurst, you know, um, which was a, an interesting experience on so many different levels. And it was my first time out of Jamaica. Yeah. I'm coming from a place where, I'm, you know, uh, and anybody who has ever traveled overseas for the first time, you know, you know what that experience is like, right? Uh, and then coming from a place where we're 90, 98% black to being only one of three black guys in my platoon, yeah. um, coming from the middle of the hood to the most prestigious military training school in the world. It was like, and, um, and then but also having a sense that, oh my God, the dream is finally being realized. Yeah. You know, it hadn't been realized, it hadn't been an army also, but whoa, was I on my way? Yeah. So there, there was all of that. And then of course the work itself, <laughs> you know, so there was all, all of that that I was kind of processing uh, at the same time. What was this mindset that you learned from your grandmother? that kind of pushed you through or helped you get through these difficult times? How would you? How would yeah, you I mean, I, I think the, the, the well, it's a, the, 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 that mindset, um, I would say, got me to go after the results. And, and maybe, yes, it, it helped me to, to push through the difficult times. You know, it was, yeah, that um, if these, if these guys, again, she told me about soldiers and how they could jump in these deep gullies and not break their legs. And to a five-year-old, that was like, oh my God, these guys are like, I don't know if I can do it, but I want to do it. You know, that was the thing. And I think when we think about our lives, all of us, we see other people. And well, my thing is, I always say, man, if they can do it, then I can do it. Yeah. You know, kind of, if she can do it, you know, I can do it, uh, kind of thing. And I think all of us have had those moments. And, um, you know, when, if you've had enough of those moments, you begin to develop a, a belief in yourself that, you know what, I can be that person that someone else will look at and go, well, if he can do it, then sure, I can do it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a challenging it's a process and it, and it, it, it you know, it, it has its challenges at the, the peaks and the valleys. And, um, you know, you have to dig deep to, to get over those obstacles that are in your way. But as you do, you become stronger yeah. and more capable of taking on the other ones. I, I imagine that some of the biggest obstacles are probably in our mind. And you mentioned already when, we, and I know I do this, and I think all of us do, is we, we talk ourselves down and we keep ourselves mm -hmm. down in our mind by limiting us. You, you mentioned, I'm just from, from, from Olympic Gardens and that place is all the way over there, or my goal is all the way over there. Who am I to be able to pull this off? You know, How do you deal with those kind of limiting beliefs? What is your, your system for that? Or how do you overcome it? Um, I, I think you, know, you have to talk yourself into becoming the person you want to be. Um, that's, that really, 
that is is my one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's that is where it starts. Really, you you kind of have to go. I, if it's something you want, and, and I'm this kind of dude where like, dude, if something I want, I it's I'm unwilling to do without it. And so I will go, I, I and I'll be honest with myself, like, how the hell are you going to do it? Was what, what is this is a question I'd ask myself, right? So, and my answer is like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But then the answer that but then the response was, but I have to do it. Yeah. It's, dude, I wish I, I wish it was deeper than that. I wish it was more profound than that. It's like, how the hell are you going to do it? I don't know. All I know, I have to do it. So you that's, just admit. That's all I know. That's it. It's just huh? committing. It's committing and not letting go. Yes, and 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 you know, and so you know, I've I've kind of had those. I, I don't know. You have, you have gone through that, that that little moment of crisis, and it's like, okay. Um, you know, let's focus on this. This is what I'm going to do. And you, you just kind of, you kind of own the idea yeah. and you start imagining yourself being that thing. Yeah. Um, and what I know is that those images, they're going to drive your commitment. They're going to drive your dedication. They're going to drive your determination. Um, you know, and you just, you just, you go in there and when it gets hard, uh, you're, falling back to that, that 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 commitment that drive that determination that you have to to get you through you you mentioned imagining you being there i actually had a question about this what part is is the part of visualizing achievement in in you actually achieving these goals i know you speak about this also on your website what what part is that in the process? <laughs> It's it's huge. It's a you know I talk about I do, I just mentioned that you have to talk your way into talk yourself into becoming that person you want to be. But part of that process is the visualization, right? The the, the self talk uh, is part and parcel of the the images that you have in your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you're telling yourself, um, so I talk about uh, when I when I give presentations, I often speak about. You know, being back in Olympic Gardens, being at this lamppost just outside my house and um, my gate and just kind of dreaming about being an army officer. And I just, I always had those images and those thoughts in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and interestingly enough, when I was, you know, uh, getting wrap, ready to wrap up high school, I remember some of my friends did not know what they wanted to be mm -hmm. or do after high school, which at the time I understand it now, they're teenagers, right? But at the time, I was surprised because I always knew. Yeah. Well, I, I always knew, and that was in everything I did. It was uh, that was always in the back of my head, um, and I, and I agree that you know when at the end of high school, when you are when reality meets the dream. Yeah. It's like okay, this has always been the dream, but this is a reality, man. This is where you're from, and this is how difficult it is. That is a real thing. It's a very rigorous process. You go, oh my God, what happens now? I'm like, well, uh, all I know is that I have to make it. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah that's all that, I know. I have to when it. reality kicks in, and when we start on our journey, we feel very inspired when we think about these things. Yeah, we can do it, but then we actually have to start. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Last night yeah. I went for a run. It was freezing. It was it was slippery, and I thought, ah, oh, shit, why am I out of here? You know. But exactly, have, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, so I talk about, I was speaking yesterday and I spoke about motivation, right? Which is really the reason why you want whatever goal you have, right? That you have to be clear about what that, that motivation is, what your why is, because that's, that's the other thing that is going to, you know, at, at the toughest parts are going to go, oh my, I can't stop now. Yeah. If I stop now, nothing changes. Right, and this and the reason why I started out uh, pursuing this goal still exist, and the reasons why uh, and the circumstances on the other side of that still exist. And if I don't overcome this hurdle, then I'm back to where I started out, and I don't want to be there. Yeah. yeah. So I have to keep going. Yeah. I'd like to talk about your competing at the Calgary 1988 Olympics. Mm -hmm. This was the debut for the underdog Jamaica bobsled team. Yeah. And, and 
for me, actually, a, a very heartwarming and inspiring story of, of doing the improbable and finding support along the way, because I think this story is, is full of it. Um, there are so many amazing examples of persistence and of also sport and camaraderie in the story. Could you share some of them? I mean, I've, actually, I'll share this with you. Last Sunday, I read about this on the ESPN website. There's like a, a, um, an entry about the, the real cool runnings, the real story mm. of the cool runnings. And actually, the story brought tears to my eyes, especially the part when you guys crashed and where you thought, like, I, I let my country down, I failed, the whole world is watching this, mm -hmm. um, miserable, as you, as you said in the interview. And then you, you guys came down and everyone wanted to shake your hands, you know? And actually the day before that Saturday, I interviewed uh, Michelle Johnston about connection. And what she said is she said, um, perfection equals disconnection. <laughs> and actually, I thought about that that being the day the day before, and then I read this this uh, this this article about you guys in this race and with this crash. And I realized actually what happened there is the opposite of that. You guys were imperfect, but you guys won. You guys and and George Fitch, you guys won in in attempting it and in putting in the work and and doing the improv. Mm -hmm. And because of that, everyone connected with you and wanted to connect. I mean, it was an amazing, inspiring story of that. And, and probably it was even better that you didn't win in, in a way yeah. than, than if you would have, you know, then it would have been too perfect. But the fact that it ended in this way, I mean, it was the start of a whole, it changed the game, you know? Yeah, there, there, there's, there's so many lessons and so many angles in, in, in yeah. what you just said. Um, you know, let, 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 let me start at the top. Let me at the Please. end and yeah, yeah. I, I dissect this, right? Um, but but um, like when I ask people, and I was there, and I always have to look it up. Like who won the medals? You know, I I think it was the Swiss and the Germans and the Russians. I think like, like nobody knows. Everybody knows our story. Everyone forgets. Um, um, no, the thing is that it's not that people don't care about the medal winners and the and the teams that are really good at the sport. Yeah. Um, but 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 as you talk about the connection, people are able to connect more with our story because they see themselves in us. Yes. Right. They see they, they see themselves as you know these people who had certain goals and dreams and thought they were ridiculous and that people would laugh at them and. Yeah hear them or, or they just think that it, it didn't make sense there was no way they could achieve it and yeah. then here it is this four guys from Jamaica is like doing this improbable thing right and they go oh my god well and and yes we didn't win but they're like they had, they had the courage to go try and that's what I lack yeah. and so we inspired that we turned that up in them Yes. which is a different emotion and reaction and connection yes. that they would have with the medal winners, yeah. um, because yeah. the, the, to them, in a way, the medal winners represent perfection. Yeah. And, and that creates that disconnect, according to Michelle Johnson, whereas we were imperfect and they go, oh, that's me. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, I could, yeah. and, and, I, and I could actually go try and, and, and get this done, you know? So um, yeah, the, 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 the crash man was, I kind of be, I kind of agree with you as as well that it it gave us uh, our story so much more power, yeah. Uh, because it's you know winning would just seems like something straight out of Hollywood, which would be rather cheesy as well. Yeah. Um. But the, but the, but there's also the success principles right where, um. Yeah, you have to put in the work. You know the the, the cliche you have to pay the price. And so if you look at the tremendous success we had at the start of the race, right? We had the seventh fastest start time. Why? Not because we were amazing bobsledders per se, but we had put a lot of work in over the years, honing and developing our athletic skills so that one day we could learn the rudiments of pushing a bobsled. And now we're able to, you know, I talk about keep on pushing all the while. And part of that is uh, that philosophy is how do you use your existing skill set and knowledge and experience to apply to a new dynamic environment? Yeah. 
yeah. to create results, right? So that's what we did. We took what we had learned and practiced and developed over the years and applied it in this one specific area in a very short period of time and achieved amazing results. Yeah. But we didn't achieve amazing results at the end of the race, the driving piece, because we hadn't put the work in. We didn't have that body of work to apply to it as well. So it, it, it worked according to the success principles. Yeah. Um, interesting. Then, of course, I, 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 I said it's interesting you say that. I appreciate you for saying it because we sometimes achieve success by chance, but then to stay on that level, you know, that, that requires a whole different uh, different skill set and experience. And like you yeah, said, yeah. actually development of the work. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and, and you know, and, and although you say chance, it, if you really think about it, it is, it, it is you in this particular moment bringing to bear everything that you have developed and yeah. worked and then become previously. And it may be a new area, but there are ways that you could connect all that you are and have become and did to create that success. It might seem like chance, improbable. Yeah. But there is a logic and, a, you know, and dare I say, a science to it, right? Yeah. Whereas, uh, you know, we walk into an operating room and we, there's, the, I'm assuming, I, you know, there's nothing in your background, certainly nothing in my background that would allow me to be successful on any level, except maybe mopping the floors, you know? Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so if we, you know, went to the operating room and we tried to do something above that, we're going to fail miserably yeah. uh, as we did uh, in, 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 in that race, we crashed. Uh, you know, and I was watching the, the 2020 Olympics, which happened in 2021, by the way, yeah. um, but, but just watching these young people and thinking about the tremendous pressure they have on them, right? To, I don't think, think people really realize that just, you know, you're, you're carrying the hope of a nation on your shoulders. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that's a tall order. And, and dude, I'm from a country where people like winning maybe more than others, especially at the Olympics, because mm -hmm. we've been so, we've been nurtured on that, right? It was like, you win. You go to the Olympics, you win. That's what you expected to do. Yeah. No, these guys crashed. What? You know, so, <laughs> so it was obviously a, a deep uh, personal disappointment, but then you're thinking, wow, I just failed my country. Yeah. I just embarrassed my nation. And I did it on international TV, you know? So we're, we're walking down the break and stretch, dejected and just trying to exit stage left. And um, yeah, that connection piece, that, that, that the, set, the fact that we were imperfect and people could relate to that imperfection, you know, had, you know, one guy reaching over and shaking my hand and then I'm shaking hands all the way down because yeah. people are appreciating um, the effort. The effort. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. are appreciating the effort. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. If you're a softer like you, yeah, it would be a tearjerker. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was early. Maybe I'm a soft. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you were indeed the biggest winners, you know, because you, I'm you, not you didn't about it. I'm not tear too level. Much. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them one that I should maybe maybe shed a tear watching the movie. But I'm not going to tell them about it. Yeah, 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 that's all right. <laughs> it shows maybe we're imperfect. You know, it allows people. Uh, to... I just hate that. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah. No, I, another thing. What I what I what I loved in that story is because you guys were in a two man sled until that that um, until the last moment, kind of. And then George Fitch, he started to to sell T-shirts. Is that is that correct? He started selling. No, so the T-shirt thing started before, prior. So we um, we were in Calgary in October of '87, and mm -hmm. um, just getting started, and the stock market crashed, and George was the one who was kind of bankrolling this thing, and he's like, "Hey, um, we have an up. You, you guys have a choice. You can either go back to Jamaica and wait until the funding comes in, or you can." stay here and try and figure it out. And it is in that moment, I argue, that Jamaica Bob said was really formed because we decided that we would stay. Yeah. Um, 
we didn't go back to Jamaica to wait on the funding, and it's a good thing the funding never came. So we stayed. Yeah. And you know, I remember, you know, I'm 21 years old, this particularly really difficult day of training, having enough money um, to afford only a, a roll, a chicken leg, and a small soda for dinner after an extraordinarily hard day of work. Yeah. And so that's where we came up with the idea to start church. We were by then in Innsbruck, Austria. Yeah. Uh, and we were trying to sell George on the shirt thing for a while and then eventually send the shirts. And we go to a club and, at night and boogie up beside a couple and go, hey man, you want to buy a shirt? You know, and the guy would say, no, the girl says, yes, he ends up paying for it and we got dinner. So that's how that started. And by the time we got to Calgary for the Olympics, it was a big hit, right? The shirts. Um, and it's kind of funny how all of that happens, right? Because before you can't even get all of that recognition and yeah. attention and so on, you have to toil. And this is true for everybody, right? You have to toil in obscurity. Yes. Yeah. And figure a way to keep but as you say, putting one foot in front of the other until people go, oh, wow, yeah. you know? But now it's e not necessarily easy, but easier. Yeah. Um, but you can't even get to that point without going through some tremendous hardships in the dark, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, because you don't know what's going to come, you know? So you yeah, have to exactly. keep pushing in uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's kind of um, the role that took us to the Olympics in terms of the finances. Mm -hmm. So we are the Olympic Games, and uh, you brought up the four man, and it is true. We um, you, we were doing two man, and it's the second week of the Olympics. And this is not in the movie, uh, because if it were, people think it's cheesy. And and this is one of those times when fact is really stranger than fiction. Huh. We were at the Olympic Games, and that's when we we decided to do four man. We had never done a four man race before. Yeah. Our first four-man bobsled race was at the Olympic Games. Imagine your first football matches at the World Cup Finals. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's amazing. That's, that, yeah, right? That, that, yeah, exactly. No, it's ridiculously uh, insane. <laughs> right. But it makes it amazing. I love but it. That, but that's what we did, yeah. We, you know, we're like, oh. Um, so, so one of the guys on the team, on that four-man team, Chris Stokes, wasn't even on the team at the start of the Olympics. He was on a track scholarship in Idaho. He came to watch his brother, Dudley, who was our driver um, race. And we recruited Chris that week and put him on the back of the sled. Pushed the seven faster start time. That's amazing. That's how, that, that's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. Sometimes you just have to start, right? You just have to start. Sometimes and you have to start, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a huge lesson in this story, I think, really, because we, we, we like, and I used to have this actually. When I started my first company, it was a small consulting business, and, and I had these products that I was trying to launch, but I kept on trying to make them perfect. Again, this whole perfect thing. And I never started, you know? And, and, what I've learned in part through that experience is we really have to just get out there, no matter how sloppy or, or, or whatever it might look, but we have to start because the learning that yeah. you get from actually doing something, it can never meet any, any MBA program or whatever. You have to do it, be in the field. Yeah. 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 Well, take it from a reform perfectionist. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I I get it. I get why we want to be perfect. I certainly understand why I wanted to be perfect and, uh, and how it drove me. Um, but excellence, just giving up your absolute best, man. Uh, we can always do that. We are by nature imperfect beings. It's not going to be perfect. And if you are waiting to be perfect, you're not going to get started. Yeah. Um, or you'll always be sabotaging yourself because you'll be beating yourself up because it's not perfect. What is that exactly? Excellence, though, can you in any given moment sit back and go, you know what, maybe it wasn't, maybe I didn't hit the, the, the home run, I didn't get the gold medal, I didn't close a sale, yeah. but did I give my best? Yeah. Can you honestly say that was your best? And if you can say that was your best effort at the moment, then you're on your way, Yeah. you know? And yeah. so, yeah, we have, we, we, have, we kind of have to get away from that. Um, perfectionist mindset yeah. and pursue excellence. 
Yeah, you're very right. It's an extremely limiting mindset, actually, to pursue perfection. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. What happens in your mind, Devin, when you set a highly improbable goal? What, can you take me through that process? Because I'm sure there's doubt, there's confusion, there's persistence, there's dedication, there's grit. What happens? <laughs> all of the above. All of the above. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. You, set the, you set the goal. Um, and then you kind of, you know, people talk about working back. And yeah, you kind of, so, okay, uh, you know, you kind of have to work back uh, step by step what to, to figure out what, what you need to do each step of the way. Mm -hmm. And you never, you never, it's kind of like a, because although I'm Jamaican, I actually ran middle distances, right? Because I, you know, speed is relative, right? And may, maybe in Holland, I would have been fast. In Jamaica, I'm not. <laughs> like, you know, so when you when I'm running an 800 meter race, I am not thinking about the entire 800 meters. You know, you're running, you know, like running this race in like in 200 meter segments, and yeah. you're within kind of five meters ahead of you at at, at each step of the way. Yeah. But you know. But you know you're going 800 meters, so you kind of work your way back as, as an analogy. And so that's what you do with your goals as well, right? You 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 always have it in the back of your mind after you've set them and you've kind of worked out your plans and you know where you want to go. And then, no, you have to, each step of the way, you, you kind of have to commit and focus on getting whatever it is that you need to get done, done. At that, point, um, the race, at, that at that point, at that point, at that point, right? And it's, uh, it, it can, it, that in itself can be a, 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 a major task with tremendous difficulty, but, but you know, you cannot get over there to the 800 meter finish until you you've have task. overcome this one, right? And then the next one and the, ne and the next one. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, what I know is that people, when we set our goals, we're all excited and enthusiastic and we kind of head down the road and you run into a little bump and go, oh, yeah, man, I'm, but I'm good, I'm good. And you, you're you still uh, filled with energy and then you overcome that one. And mm -hmm. then you meet another obstacle and you have a little less energy, but you, you find a way over until sometimes some people allow themselves to run out of energy and they give up on the goal. Yeah. Um, you have to you have to want it you know so we go back to that that motivation that why you have to want it man um because that is where i promise you there are times when it's going to be difficult um and there are times when you're going to feel like you want to give up yeah that's part of the course but then you, you cannot give up you just cannot yeah, it's a good point. You need to know your why because that's ultimately the, the place you can come back to, which where you can actually tap some energy again. Because if yes. the purpose is right, you can find some some energy stored um, in, in some unsuspecting corner somewhere. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, there's always a reserve. <laughs> yeah, there's always more than we think. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you deal, Devin, with? other people's realities, so to speak, and their limitations and limiting beliefs when you share about your goals. Because maybe sometimes for ourselves, it can be extremely clear and we know where we're going, but then if we share it with other people, they can have their limiting beliefs and they can kind of pull us down. How do we deal with mm -hmm. them? How do you deal with them? I, I tend not to share my goals with others. I, uh -huh. I keep it to myself. You know, that's their, that, you know, what they think is their business. Um, uh, not mine, um, but I mean, you do find yourself in those environments and situations where, the if you're not careful anyway, that the, the limiting belief can pull you down, and um, you allow their reality to become your reality. I, you know, I would say this: that the fact that you're in a similar environment with others doesn't mean that their reality have to be yours. Yeah. Um, and it's something I unwittingly discovered as a teenager, you know, growing up in Olympic Gardens and with these uh, other boys my age, my peers, who, and I get it, you look around in the environment and there's nothing that suggests success is remotely uh, possible for us. Mm -hmm. And they would call themselves sufferers, like, oh my God, I'm a sufferer. And that, yeah. Which 
felt so dead end, even at this stage in my life. It was like, oh my God, it, so, it feels burdensome. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and Julius, I, I was 13 years old, man. And, I, and it was in the summer, um, during the summer break from school. I woke up one morning and I said, hey, we're not friends anymore. I just, I just stopped hanging out with them because I couldn't embrace that suffering mentality, that sufferer's mindset. Um, and, I've, and I've just kind of stayed with that um, way of operating, um, you know. So, I, I, so one, I, I generally don't share my goals with others because they, it just won't, it, it won't resonate with them, and they are going to. People will always. Um, project their insecurities and their lack of confidence in their abilities yeah. on you, right? So, so, so I don't. But then when people tell me I can't, that's fine because I'm, that just is fuel to the fire. You want me to do something, tell me I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I get that, yeah. Yeah, good point. And it's true, I think many times people don't want, want you to succeed because it confronts them with their inability to do things and to get things done and then to motivate themselves and push themselves forward. And for that, yeah. they, they, I, they benefit from keeping you down as well because it's less confrontational. Well, exactly, because you know, they, they, they get to feel better about themselves. And then there are those who truly love you and they don't want you to get disappointed. Again, they're projecting their own insecurities yeah. on you because they can't see themselves doing it. Yeah. And, if, and since they can't see themselves doing it, they can't see you doing it. Yeah. And they're trying to spare you the pain of yeah. trying and failing and being disappointed. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they're coming from a place of love, but it doesn't serve you. Yeah, correct. Because it, all it's doing is limiting you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very good point. It's not all about from a bad place, can also be from a good place, but still, if there's yeah. a scope or view of the world and what's possible and what's not, is limiting and your scope is bigger than that, it can still impede you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throughout your life and, and your endeavors, you learned to set goals and you learned to actually achieve them. Um, this is also what you teach and what you talk about, what we're talking about today. Why is goal setting so important and why do many people actually fail to set clear goals? Because that's also, mm. we, we think a lot about to actually make it tangible and practical and hard and write things down. And not many people do this, funny enough. Yeah. Um, and so, Part of the reason I sat at the back is that uh, a lot of people, people don't know how to do it. You know, nobody, have been, it's one of those things that we're never taught. You know, you spend, you know, you know, eight, 10 years of, you know, 12 years sometimes of formal education, even more. And you, you never do one class about goal setting. Um, but, but it's the fear as well, the fear of failure, right? If, you, if you're stepping out of your comfort zone to go achieve the thing, there's a high probability that you will fail and people don't want to fail, they don't want to be ridiculed. Um, so the fear of rejection is part of it as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so all those, those fears and people just not understanding the power of goal setting. So it's a powerful thing. So it's important to do it because it gives you a life direction. It gives you a life focus. It, it um, allows you to tap into the motivation as well. Because, you know, look, we all, no matter where we are in our lives and no matter where we are from, they're all, we all have things that we want and that we don't want, right? And, they're, and those are the areas are, around which we're going to set goals, right? So um, there are things that we want, which means that we don't have it in our life now. Mm -hmm. And we think that it's going to make us do what? Feel better yeah. by having it. Yeah. There are things in our life that we don't want, that we need to get rid of, right? And the way you do that now is by setting a goal to improve that particular situation mm -hmm. because we think it's going to make us feel better. Yeah. And, that's, and that's where I, I, I say now, I am unwilling to do it without that which I want because if it's something I don't, that I don't have and I think it's going to make me feel better or something that exists that I need to get rid of, if I don't get rid of it, I'm, I'm still going to be miserable in this area. If I don't have it, I'm still going to feel unsatisfied in this area. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am always pushing to achieve that goal. And that's the thing. I think if we just 
kind of zeroing on the idea that you know the, the, we're setting goals because we think it's going to make our life better. Yeah. And the, and if you ask the average person, do you want your life to be better? The obvious answer is yes. Yes. Well, yes. You, well, you're going to have to set a goal, and then you, and if you if you really really want your life to be better, you're going to have to then be willing to to go through the process and put in the work to make it right. You got to do the work. Yeah. And deal with the, uh, the the frustration and the setback and the obstacles and everything, because you want your life better. Yeah. So you talked about the why, which is the driving force and the source of energy for the goals. What are some other practical tips? You said that people don't know how to set goals. What can you share that can help people along the way to set more clear goals? Yeah, I, I think it's. Um, <laughs> are you ready for the work? It's doing the hardest work that. I claim it's the hardest work that any, any of us have to do, and it is being introspective. It's kind of like sitting there and just being, you know, in a quiet space and time, and 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 going inside to figure out, you, you know, what it is that you want out of your life. And it's not the answers are not always apparent, mm -hmm. um, but I think if you if you keep asking and you keep earnestly and you keep searching earnestly, you're going to come up, maybe not with a final answer, so, so to speak, but you're going to come up with an answer that is going to put you in a, on a, on a direction or a, a trajectory that you're going to like in the end, right? Yeah. So for example, when, uh, yeah, I'm an army officer, and now I'm, uh, you know, and I'm Olympian, and I'm thinking about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, and I'm like, yeah, I think I want to leave the army. Okay, yeah, but to do what? And I had no idea what that would be. And then one day I saw an ad in the newspaper and they were advertising hospitality management. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ta-da! You know, um, that's what I want to do. I like traveling, I like meeting people. Um, so that put me on a path to move to New York to study hospitality management. And I started at, uh, but then discovered that the Bob said bug was still in me. Mm -hmm. And I went to pursue that and then discovered motivational speaking. And so now I do travel and I meet people and, uh, you know, I live in hotels, I don't work in them. So I, I tell that story just to say, um, if in, in being introspective, and it, it took me a while, you know, as I said, keep seeking mm -hmm. to find this idea of hospitality management, which is not what I do now, but it put me on a path that led me to where I am. Yes, yes. So the first step is to do that hard work, that yeah. uncomfortable work of, yeah. of always of searching yourself, searching yeah. your soul, trying to figure out what the next step is. Because in figuring out the next step, you will then start seeing the next step and the next step. Yes. So once you've figured out what that next step is, um, so to be honest, uh, you know, being totally transparent, I never wrote that down. Um, back then, but that's something that I've learned that you should do. You should write your goals down because it's really, it really crystallizes it in your mind. Yeah. You know, my process at the time was to just to be constantly thinking about it, become being obsessed yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 Um, so once you've done that, like you're like, you're very clear about what it is that you're trying to do. No, you have to now start figuring out the steps and you may not, you may not even know where to start. And that's perhaps where you can start having conversations with people. Yeah. It's not necessarily to say, hey, I want to go to the Olympics as a Jamaican Bob Center, but or it's equivalent of that, some ridiculous goal that you have, but rather, hey, so if somebody wants to go to the Olympics, how would they do it? Yeah. You know, you start asking people who you think would have answers and you, you ask multiple people, you know, go to multiple sources, go online, read a book, You'd be surprised the kind of information is out there yeah, um, once you start looking for it. Um, and that, so you just kind of formulate, uh, get the ideas and you start to formulate your plan mm -hmm. and you start put your plan in place. And uh, to go back to something we said earlier, you don't wait until it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, you have to start. And yeah, I, you start. Uh, yeah, I also really like what you said about the fact that once, same with the hospitality example, you took a step and it led you to the next thing. Um, that's also been my experience. Sometimes I had no clue how I would pull it off and, and how I would 
achieve the, the goals, the big goals that I've set for myself, but I just started. And along the way things presented itself, it's also like, like synergy almost that once you get into motion, then forces kind of start to help you along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and about writing down, um, actually I have the practice every year I, I take time and I, I formulate my goals for the next year. I kind of make kind of a vision board of it. And funny enough, last year I didn't do it. So this year has been somewhat chaotic in a way, but I also have to say the previous years where I did do it, and when I look back on, on, on the goals that I set, I set ambitious goals also in terms of the business, mm -hmm. and it's, it's freaking scary how things that I've kind of forgot about, at least on, on some conscious level, how they came true and how many of the things I overachieved, even though they were at the start very ambitious goals. So I think also by doing this and by writing it down, it's like where focus goes, energy flows. It's just, it just starts mm -hmm. kind of in a way. It's a very interesting, interesting pattern. So I'm, I'm very happy that we're having this, this talk now because actually for next week, my, my next week is going to be, I'm not going to be working. I'm going to be working, but working on me, not on right. my business, but on doing the introspective part and on formulating the goals for 2022 and, and actually putting things down on paper again. So uh, your, your, your inspiration, the talk we're having now is <laughs> so I appreciate it a yeah, lot. So, absolutely, man. And this is kind of the time of year for me as well, yeah. you know, where I, the, the year is ending and you're kind of uh, having our year in review. Correct. But at the same time, a, a year in preview. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a time when I'm introspective. So in yeah. the beginning, I never used to, write my goals down, but I do know. And it's a very similar. My worst year in America was, um, and I don't remember which year exactly that is. I want to say it's 99, maybe 94 going to 95. I said, oh, yeah, I'm not going to write on the goals this year. I'm going to see how it goes. Yeah. It didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> it did not go. You know, It didn't go. I'm like, oh, we will never do that again, right? Yeah. Um, and so yeah, at the end of the year, I just um, really focus on, like you, me being introspective and figuring out, you know, what I want to accomplish the next year. Yeah. And, and also, go for it. Yeah, and also looking where you're lacking, but also mm -hmm. because because that's that's trying to fix things, but also really seeking okay, where are things flowing? Where can I add to the current? I think that's also very mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could you share something about habits perhaps that you have that help you along the way of achieving goals? <laughs> habits. So when they say habits, I'm like, okay, I, I eat too much sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I do that at times. I don't like that. Oh habit. my God. Uh, it's, it's horrible, man. It's horrible. Yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have a sweet set of dentures. I don't have a sweet <laughs> <laughs> Um. You know, uh, Benjamin Franklin says, early to bed, early to rise, make a man healthy, happy, and wise. Yeah. Uh, you should you should go, well, I guess you should go to bed early. Uh, you know, that's not a habit of mine. I don't necessarily get to bed early, but I do rise early. Hmm. I think it's important to get up early and give yourself some time um, to think and read and and meditate, I, I, you know, whatever it is that works for you. Like some people, you know, they, they want to get up and pray in the morning and that's fine. Yeah. You want to meditate, um, you should, you, you know, you, you need some quiet time. Yeah. You yeah. need some quiet time to set your mind and get ready for the day, um, you know, read uh, or listen to something uh, inspirational. So that's generally how I start my day, yeah. uh, my day. Yeah. Uh, in in a former life, I used to start with with working out. My, I do my workouts at the end of the day now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then, then I just kind of get into uh, into the day. So like this morning, I was up early and um, you know did all all of that stuff, and then I did a little work, and then we are connected. So my day starts with the work. So the, which yeah. is this is part of that yeah. part of that um, effort. Yes, I, I like uh, I like to make an observation. I think what this does, and I recognize this for myself as well, when I do it and also when I don't do it, because I try to have this as well in the morning, these moments where actually I, because I'm training for an Ironman, so I have my 
swim, on my runs and my bikes and whatever. Um, I, I try to do it in the morning and then try to have some, some time for writing and for reflecting, mm -hmm. and a relaxed breakfast where I have time to, to, you know, to have time for me. And I think why that's important is because it's easy during the rest of the day to start racing and reacting with whatever comes on your, on your path and to mm -hmm. have a quiet space where we can reflect and where ideas can pop up and where it's really time for ourselves. I think it's very important also in the creative process of achieving whatever goals you set, because that's where also the nuggets of information and where we have actually the, the, the peace of mind to see them when there's some inspiration yeah. coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On your website, I saw a time management matrix for goal setting. That got me curious. Can you share a bit about that? Yeah, so um, I'm trying to, forgive me, I'm trying to um, gather my thoughts here on that. Sure. Um, sure. Remind me of what I have there. Let me see that one second. It's as part of the goal, the goal setting section, and there's a there's a part about time management matrix. But what I what I imagine what it refers to is this 800 meter race, which you break down in 200 meter sections, and where you're looking at the flag right. in front of you, like kind of breaking it down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, right. So, so the, the thing is that if we think about our lives, right, we have all these things that we want to accomplish or we could go work on doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we have all these things that are influencing us as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, so you may, let's say in your case, you know, you, you, you're training for an iron man and you know you need to go for a swim this morning. But then you also, you know, your friend John, uh, told you that he really needs to connect with you and it's really important. Mm -hmm. And then you may have um, a business call that you need to return or, um, um, you know, you may just not, you, you may just want to lay in bed, you know, yeah. or you may have a book that you need to read or an article mm -hmm. that you need to read or write. Yeah. And so the, the, there are these things in our, in our lives that, you know, when you think about the time management matrix and that's um, Stephen Covey made it, um, popular in his book, hmm. um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. But I want to, if my memory serves right, it, it started with Dwight Eisenhower, the US general. He mm -hmm. created, actually created that. So you have these things. You have uh, things that are important and things that are not important, things that are urgent and things that are not so uh, urgent. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So what would, what's something that would be urgent? Something that would be urgent is like the phone ringing right now. Yeah. Right, if, 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 if your phone was ringing or mine was ringing right now, it would grab our attention. Now, is it important? Um, an important, not, not necessarily, right? An important thing is th those things that we, quite frankly, take for granted because we think it doesn't matter, like our health, yeah. right? People go, oh, I don't have to go to the gym today. Um, because they can always go tomorrow because right now they're feeling healthy. Now realizing that if you keep putting off going to the gym, you're getting uh, less healthy, right? More and more so. The same thing with our relationships, right? The same thing with um, uh, making those sales calls, right? Uh, you, you miss one sales call today, what's the big deal, right? I need, to take, I need to take this phone call and talk to John about the party that's happening on the weekend kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, when we, so when we think about our, our goals and, and how we achieve them, we have to um, learn to figure out the things that may be urgent and important. What would, what would so, an example of that be? Like, um, you really need to go to the doctor because you're not feeling very well right now. It's mm -hmm. urgent and yeah. it's important for your long-term health and well-being. Yeah. Um, the not urgent but important would be that run that you keep putting off. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. if you're doing that run, perhaps you wouldn't have had the health issue that you're, that you're dealing with right now, right? Um, um, you know, urgent and not important are things that we absolutely need to avoid. Uh, certain, 
certain conversations are just uh, not so important that we should avoid them. And then things that are not so urgent and not important, you know, we, we also have to limit them as well. Yeah. So, oh, you, you know, our, we are most productive doing things that are important and Absolutely. not urgent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's where we're more. Our energy yeah. should be spent. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, I have two more questions. Thanks for, for clarifying that, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you mentioned connecting values to your goal. What is the relation between values and the goals we set? You know how they, they talk about, oh, to go back to Simon Covey's book, actually, he speaks about that. I, I, I don't know if he coined the term, but climbing the ladder of success. Mm -hmm. And getting to the top and realizing that you are the ladder is along uh, uh, is lean against the wrong wall, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, you know you want to go on vacation, and but you want you want peace and serenity, and you end up in a log cabin. But really, we we but is that peaceful and serene? Yeah. But what what was more important to you is like being in a beach cabin instead, or being on a lake with water and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, right? Um, so if you're not very clear, one, on your goal, and then two, on the things that are most important to you, you'll find that you'll set goals, you'll do all the things that you need to do to achieve them, but at the end, you feel unaccomplished. Yeah. You know, is that, you know, it's like, Oh, so I achieved this, but wow, it's empty. Um, so it's really, really important that you're going, okay, I really, I want to achieve this thing, but it's important to me yeah. for these reasons, right? I value, um, I, I, these, these are my, what, so whatever your values are, they have to be reflected in the goals that you're working towards. Yeah, yeah so you don't pursue the wrong, the wrong uh, goals for the wrong reasons. And then these exactly. are intrinsically linked to your value system of what's right and wrong, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, because if you think about it, anybody can achieve a goal. You know, if you set the goal, if you're very clear about what you want, and then you're willing to do the work and overcome the obstacles and deal with the setbacks, you'll eventually get there. Yeah. Now, if you go through that process, you know, that mechanical process, let's say, and you achieve the goals. Now, Know that you have it. How how are you? How, how does that feel to you? Are you relating to that goal? Can you connect to that goal? If it wasn't in line with your values in the first place, the things that are important to you, the way you see your life um, unfolding, are you contributing to the world? Then it means nothing. Yeah. It's empty. You well, you feel empty. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fulfilling in that case. No. 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 So it would have been a wasted effort. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, and we can prevent that, I imagine, by taking the time for introspection and reflection into... The hardest work there is, man. Yeah. The yeah, hardest work there is. Important work, yeah. 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 Last question, and I, and I like to close always with this question, actually. Now, only one word changes, but what question about the improbable didn't I ask Devin, which I should have asked. Is there a question that you can think of, another angle or another? Um, I don't know. I, I, that's a really good question. I'm struggling to come up with one. It, would it be, can anyone accomplish the improbable? <laughs> and, and the short answer is yes, of course. Yeah. We can all accomplish the improbable, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's a great, great note to end with because it means we can all do it no matter what, as long yeah, as we but, work and, and don't give up, stay positive, stay focused. Yeah. I so, I so believe in that though. I so, you know, we're, we're, we spend a lot of time talking about goals. What, what's clear is that the goal has to, you know, values, the goal, the goal has to, means something to you it has to be important to you it has to be within within your i almost use the word probably but i won't say within your realm of interest right mm -hmm. so can we all accomplish the improbable 
Yes, I think so. But the, the, the caveat is that it has to be within this realm, right? So if I have no interest of being a deep sea diver, it's not going it, it, it clearly probably won't happen because it's just not in me to want to put myself through whatever pain and struggle to become a deep sea diver or a mountain. I don't want to climb Mount Everest, you know. Um, could I do it? Yes, but could you do it? Yes, but not, but only if that's something that's really deeply personal and meaningful to you. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good point. Actually, it very much aligns with what I said about not only Focus, or not focusing too much on trying to fix things, but going with the things where you can just go with the current. That's actually this interest that we have. Then it becomes a yeah, problem. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so yeah, yeah. Devin, I, I, I want to say thanks so much. It was great to talk to you and, and pick your brain. I really appreciate your stories and yeah, keep inspiring people. You certainly have inspired me. I really appreciate it. My man, it's been, been fun. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Thank you for this amazing work that you're doing too, you know, um, speaking with uh, some amazing people and picking their brains and putting, uh, you know, this incredible information out in the world. It's important work. Uh, thank you. Congratulations on doing it. And I just uh, encourage your audience to uh, keep listening and keep supporting the work. Thank you so much. Hey, have a great morning and enjoy your day and happy holidays. And yes, happy, indeed. And I'm happy right. birthday because I know Saturday is your oh, my, oh, don't mention that, man. Oh, my back, my back. <laughs> hey, yeah, Christmas Day, baby. That's how I roll. What can yeah. I say? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Enjoy yeah. the holidays as well. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay well. All right, you too. Bye. Bye, Devin. Bye.